Hello, my name is Miss Watson. I'm the Antlers Elementary Principal. And in celebration of Read Across America this month, we are giving our students extra time during the school day to drop everything and read. In light of everything that has happened with COVID-19, we have seen that our students need extra reading time. We would like to share some strategies that would help our parents help our students be successful in reading and help them read more at home. Hi, I am Miss Austin and I am a pre-K teacher here at Antlers Elementary. For our literacy activity at home, we would really like to emphasize on students practicing their letters at random. A lot of the kiddos know their alphabet song and they can sing their ABCs, but when they're learning to read, the letters are not in alphabetical order. So we practice them at random in isolation to prepare for the blending skills they will need in kindergarten. Um, to practice this, I have a little game set up. I just took a piece of paper and I wrote the letters A to Z in order. And then I have a Ziploc bag with some index cards and I have the letters on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little game with Kaysen and we're gonna show you one way to practice this at home. Are you ready? All right. Why, why is that like, white like that? Cause you gotta get it first. So he's gonna draw a letter out of my bag. Just one. Okay, what letter is that? Spin it around. There you go. L. L. So he has letter L. So can you show me where L is? Uh-huh. It's right there. All right. So I'm going to circle letter L because he knows it at random in isolation. And then I'm just going to cover it. That way he can see which letters he knows. All right. Let's try again. N. N. All right. Can you find it? Uh-huh. It's right, um, right there. Good job. And I'm going to circle it, and then he's going to get to cover it. All right. Let's say he doesn't know one, and I'm going to show you what you can do with your child if they don't know a letter. And I could do one. Card. There you go. Do that one. It's J. No. Do you know it? <laughs> yeah. You know it? Okay, find it. It's right Okay, so that one is J. So cover it. All right, now we're going to pretend like you don't know this one, okay? Do you know this letter? I. No. What are you supposed to say? No. No. Okay, so he doesn't know this letter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I will help you find it. All right, let's go through our alphabet. And we're going to say our alphabet one by one, and I'm going to point until we can find this letter on our paper. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I, there it is. And then I'm not going to circle it on my paper. I'm just going to lay it down. And we're going to keep going all the way through. At the end, you can just clear the paper. And then you have circled the ones that he knows at random. And then it also shows him which ones he needs to practice on. You can do this with uppercase letters, lowercase letters, sounds, numbers, sight words. You can use it with just a piece of paper and some markers. Um, you could even do rocks in a bag. You could write the letters on the rocks and have them fill for a rock and draw a rock out. But any practice um, is very beneficial for when they get to kindergarten and their letters are not in order anymore. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. Hello, I'm Lexi Rimber. I'm the kindergarten reading teacher here at Antlers, and I've got a helper today. Her name's Claire. She's gonna, we're gonna help you help your child at home with if they're struggling with reading. Um, one of the things, if they're struggling with sounding out words, one of the first things that I do is I can I give sounds orally. So if I said j et, can you tell me what that says? Um, if you slide those sounds together, what does that say? J. Good. What if I said mm -x? Nick. Good. When they're doing that consistently, then they should be able to sound out words on, in a book on a paper for you. 
Um, one of the strategies that we use here in the classroom to help them is when we're sounding out a word, we start at the top of our arm. And so if we're sounding out the word big, can you help me sound that out? Big. And then we're gonna slide it together. Big. Very good. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're going to um, read this first page for you. And I, we're just gonna demonstrate if we're struggling with the story or with that sentence, some things that we can do to improve. So let's start here, okay? Always point to the words as you're reading. This. 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 Big. Big. Pig. Pig. Uh -huh. Pig. Good, okay. What I like to do is go back and read that sentence again because I want to improve. And hopefully this time we're not having to sound out as many words. All right, ready? Let's do it again. This. This. Big. Big. Pig. Is. Pan. Pig. Okay. We were still having to sound some words out, so I'd like to do it. Let's do it again. All right. This time I want to see if you can do it without any help from me. This big pig is pan pig. Good. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the next sentence. Do I need to be filled? Okay. And pan and pan pig find. find. Uh -huh. Good. Let's read it again. Pan, pan, pig, find, cat, cat. Okay, we're looking for fluency because then that leads to comprehension and understanding what we're reading. My name is Mrs. Jones and I teach first grade and this is my helper today. This is Jaden and he's going to help me teach you some strategies to use with your child when you're helping them with their homework at night. And the first um, is not a strategy, but it's an activity that we want to show you. And it's a way to help introduce some high frequency words that's in your story for the week. And all you do is you get a container, you write the high frequency words for the week on pieces of paper. And what your child does is they can just pull one out and they can read it to you. Once. Once. And he got it correct, so he gets to keep it. But then if he was to pull one out, and he was to get it wrong. Watch. Well, that one's right, so put that over in your pile. But if he was to get it wrong, you would just fold it, you would explain to him, like if he didn't know that this was door, you would say, this is door, D-O-O-R, and you would put it back in the container, and then he could choose again. Another activity that you might wanna play that we don't have here, but just is a matching game. You can write all of your high frequency words on two separate cards and spread them all out, and they can take turns, kinda like this. Thank you, Jaden. Kinda like this. And then you can turn two over, turn one over for me, Jaden, and you can read it. Watch. Okay, and read another, turn another one over. Want. Want. And if those were matching cards, if they were the same word, then he could get a match and then he could go again. So that's another activity. Just want to keep it fun and hands-on, and um, that makes it a little bit more exciting for the kids when you're practicing with them. Um, another a reading strategy I want to um, talk about is called choral reading. And this is really good with some of your struggling readers. Um, choral reading is when you read together. And what you would do is that you can have your child points and then we can start reading together. So we're gonna read, so let's go, ready? Little rabbit sleeps under an old apple tree. Just then, the wind starts to blow. The branches shift in the wind. And what's that sound word right there? Thump. Something hits little rabbit. Um, and what was it that fell and hit little rabbit? Apple. An apple, an apple. And what caused the apple to fall? The wind. The wind. And as you do choral reading, you can stop and talk about the picture, talk about what you just read. And as you're reading, Really try to um, read with some fluency and how you would actually read and just show the show your child how how a fluent reader would read and that way they can they could read with you <laughs> okay okay um 
And as always, just take the time to read with your child and make it fun and as exciting as it can be. And remember, if it's important to you, it'll be important to your child. Thank you. My name is Michelle Newell, and I'm the second grade reading teacher at Antlers Elementary. James is my helper today, and we're going to demonstrate a couple of reading strategies that you can do at home with your child. One strategy is called echo reading. This is where you will read a sentence and the child will read after you. When doing this, make sure you point to the words and the child follows along. James and I are going to demonstrate this, this for you. James, are you ready? Yes. All right. Being the size that he was, being the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. Dex was often often overlooked. The other dogs grew tired of waiting. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up. For Dex to catch up when they played chase. When they played chase. And after a while, and after a while, they forgot to invite him at all. They forgot to invite him at all. Another strategy I would recommend is to check their reading comprehension. This is to make sure your child is understanding what they read. After they read or have read, make sure you ask them questions. If they don't understand them, let them reread. Reread is a good strategy in itself. The most important thing you can do at home with your child is to let them read, read, read. Ben and his family thought they could race away from the wave in the car, but the water caught them, and suddenly Ben was all by himself. The wave grabbed Ben and sucked him under. The churning water twisted him, tore at him, spun him around like a bird caught in a tornado. Terror screamed through his body. He was drowning. He fought with all his might, but the water wouldn't let him go. It was a, as though he, would, he was in the jaws of a voracious monster, and there was no escape. Very good, London. Good job. Hi, I'm Mrs. Copeland, the third grade reading teacher here at Antlers Elementary, and this is my friend, London. We wanted to share with you some things that you can do at home to help your student progress with their reading skills. Make sure they have a quiet area with no distractions for reading. Sit with them and help them to sound out any words they cannot pronounce. As you help them break apart the word and sound it out, write the word down in a journal, like this one. By keeping track of these new words, your student can practice reading the words they have in the journal until they have mastered them. The more practice they have at reading the word, the more likely they will be able to read it when they see it again in another text. The journal will also keep track of all the new words they have mastered and encourage them to continue to read words they haven't been able to read before. Another way you can support your student in their reading is to ask them questions about what they are reading. In third grade, we learn about the five story elements, right? See if your student can tell you who the characters are, what the setting of the story is, and the plot or events that happen in the story. Ask them what problem occurred in their story and how it was solved. This will encourage them to think about what they read and increase their comprehension skills. I hope these ideas will help you as you encourage your young readers at home. Go ahead. Okay. Eventually he understood that he was free. That whole sky was waiting there above him. All of that light, he flew upwards, wings fluttering, ready to reclaim his moth life. Well, it turns out there's a good reason giant moths only come out at night, and that's mostly because of camouflage and the fact that their predators are asleep. Harry had neither of those advantages at our playground in the middle of the day. Not 10 seconds went by when a bird from a neighboring tree swooped down and grabbed Harry in its, in its beak. Harry had been a free moth for a good 10 seconds before his painful, inevitable death. Thank you, Evan. Hello, everyone. My name is Mrs. Kinslow, and I'm a fourth grade reading teacher at Antlers Elementary. We were going to offer some um, useful strategies that you can use with your emerging and struggling readers. This is Evan. He is a fourth grade student of ours, and he it was my model for today. Did you see how eloquently and beautifully he read the passage with such emotion? That is what we want. Peer, um, peering, peer modeling is one of the most important strategies. I think that if I can read something and show my emotion, that the students will also want to show their emotion. Also, learning to read what you like is another great strategy. Children will read as long as they are interested. Some of the things that we also do in fourth grade is ask questions. Read the story with your child 
ask them questions, and go through the story step by step. What was the main idea? What were the characters doing? What was the text that told us what they were doing? And as always, practice, practice, practice. That is the best strategy anyone can use. You can do this at home, in the car, or just about anywhere. So from now on, read, read, read. Thank you. More than a hundred years, Mount St. Helen had been quiet, a beautiful mountain surrounded by forests. Hikers climbed the winding trails, skiers raced down the snowy slopes, children splashed, oh, sorry, splashed in the clear, crystally lakes. Except this peaceful mountain was not a mountain, it was a dangerous volcano, a deadly cone filled with molten rock and poisonous gases. As And soon it would explode a power of 10 million tons of dynamite. Oh, I like how you put emphasis on dynamite there, Noah. Good morning, I'm Paula Brown, fifth grade reading teacher, and these are two of my students, Noah and Mason. We know, parents, that it's great for your fifth graders to read aloud to you for reading practice, but did you know it's really good for you to read aloud to your students. You have readers who are disengaged. They're not really into reading, and this is a great way to get them engaged in reading. Um, you can go to the library together, the public library. You can pick books out there. There's great books in our classroom. We're reading, reading Wayside Gets a Little Stranger. It's just a for fun book, but you have Bill Wallace. He's a great author. Uh, you have series of books that your child might get started on, but I would highly encourage you to pick your book out together. Um, and the one thing about reading aloud, your child can actually listen to a book that's at least two levels above their readability and comprehend it. If they're reading it, it's difficult. But if it's a read aloud book, they can go two levels above and understand. So you can enjoy different types of book. When you read the book to them, they'll read it with passion. Notice how Noah emphasized dynamite at the end. You want to make this fun for them. They have to read a lot just for information. So when you read this, let them enjoy it. Uh, be silly with it. They can read some to you, but you read to them too. And the thing about this, it increases their comprehension, uh, broadens their vocabulary, and it improves their listening skills. So parents, they are not too old to be read aloud to. I highly encourage you, please get a family book, share it at night with your child, have that together. Boys, could you share some thoughts on read aloud, please? Um, I think read aloud, like fifth graders are definitely not too old for read aloud. Read aloud is very important. Um, I like whenever after recess we read Wayside, like she said, and it's probably my favorite part of the day. You know what? And, um, wait. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Well, the read out loud books, maybe some children might not like some books, I don't know. But Noah, do you like this one? Yes. Okay. <laughs>